over 100 miles per hour, speed skiers run on the ragged edge. Velocity is uppermost in their minds, but for good reason, safety isn't far behind. Speed skiers are expected to exceed 140 miles per hour this year, and with new computer-designed helmets, they're also expected to survive. So the helmet's going to be much smaller, too. Silicon graphics computers are being used by Bell Sports and the United States Performance Engineering Program to design maximum speed and maximum safety into a speed skiing helmet for the U.S. team. If we weren't doing this on the computer, we wouldn't be doing this helmet. And the reason why is it takes too much time and too much money to do it by hand. The new helmets might add three miles per hour to a skier's speed, perhaps the margin of victory. By 1996 on the Olympic Games, the use of these kind of computers is going to be ubiquitous. What we're trying to do is to push the limits of computer technology to help each one of these different sports endeavors push the limits of their own technology. It takes powerful 3D graphics computers, the kind that do things like fluid dynamics analysis, to simulate a sporting event. And now, with the advent of low-priced 3D computers like this Iris Indigo Elan, sporting organizations can better their odds of winning. The most complex program ever run on a silicon graphics system is now designing sales for the Italian challenger in the America's Cup, Il Moro di Venezia. This is a boat so turning around. We can see how the sails clears the rigging. The computer analyzes aerodynamics, shape, and structure, aiming to make the strongest, fastest, and lightest sails ever. Innumerable calculations are made understandable by graphic displays. I cannot look at all the numbers I need to see as they roll by. In one picture, I can, I can sort of comprehend a thousand rows of numbers. Competition comes down most purely to who's the better competitor. The entry of computers onto the field of play will give those who use them an even better chance to show their stuff. I'm Lee McCarran. Number 56, David yeah. LeBaron. On the course, we have number 56, <laughs> David LeBaron. Number 56, David Yeah, I'd like you to take my 207s down, please. Right now, can anyone want to sign someone for me, Berlin? Mike, get back in the race. Oh, Berlin, you want to sign for me? Yeah, Mike, get back in the race. We're washing the dishes. That's right. Where are you going to go? I'm going right after Steve, so I'm going to be like fourth or fifth. Yeah, I've got stuff to bring down already. And you know what, though? Come on, Mark. Oh, yeah?
higher pressure. So we see that the jib is loaded up here in the top versus load, so less loaded down here in the bottom. And we see that there's a little bit of back wind on the main here in the front where we see the, the, the black or, or whitish color here. It also shows us here in the area from the mid of the sail coming down here that is very little loaded in the front. So we might do away with very so weak and light fabric in the front of the sail so we can zoom in on that particular area and see what goes on. And this picture here shows how much the sail material has stretched. So we see that the highest pressure on the sail is sitting up above where the jib really is. Then the pressure comes down again as it goes towards the leech and the leech itself is on the very edge, pressure is zero. We can see how the sails clears the rigging. Are you showing how it actually moves on the boat here? This is the boat so turning around, so now we watch, we're watching the, the sails from, from aft. So we take this pressure here that we just determined, and this pressure translates into stress in the, in the material. And this stress, we said a range of, looks like this here, for instance. These technologies are all coming down into such affordable price ranges at this point that almost any of the sports teams or different endeavors can afford to freely distribute this kind of technology among many of their designers and sports teams. There's just a whole range of different uh, football, baseball, and other uh, kinds of events where you'll see uh, these kind of technologies at these new price points being used uh, for things where people were basically taking guesses before. If we're working with somebody in the America's Cup and our technology is going to allow that hole to go just that much faster, then you better believe all those other camps that are out there trying to build holes are going to be trying to figure out, how do I get this kind of information? How can I make my hole that much faster? How can I make my sail design uh, that much faster? We've learned to understand much more about what is going on in the sail. So we now have a better feeling for why this happened to a sail we built than we did before. They also provide us with insight into what goes on within the sail itself, which we would not be able to see on the water. Like, what is the tension, what is the stretch in the sail class material? We could not see that on the water unless we started using strain gauges, but we would not be able to do that really.